Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. Before we get started, just a quick thank you for getting Extreme Genes to where it is today. We're on radio stations all over America, and our podcast is growing exponentially. I'm often asked, what can I do to support Extreme Genes? Well, that's easy. Become a part of our Extreme Genes Facebook community and like our page. Share the podcast with your friends. Follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, support our sponsors through links on our website. They're the best in the business. Thanks again. Now let's get on to this week's podcast. Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma, Pig Sloppin', in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. And welcome back to another week of Extreme Genes, America's family history show on ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And uh, I'm very excited, finally, to get on Dan Debenham today. He's going to be a guest on the show in about eight minutes. He is the host and producer of of this genealogy family history reality show that everybody's talking about. It's called Relative Race, and it is nuts. It is so much fun, and you're going to hear right from Dan himself how this idea came about, how it got formulated, where you can see it, where you can catch it on demand. It is a great show, and it was the talk of Roots Tech, by the way, when we were there because they debuted the first program. Plus, later in the show, since it is St. Patrick's Day celebration this weekend in many places and, of course, formal in the coming week, we're going to talk to an actual senator from Ireland and find out about what's happening with family history records for those of Irish descent here in the United States. Great stuff. And if you've got a young adult student, somebody's offering a free grant as they develop genealogy and family history. It's like 500 bucks. If you want to hear how your young student can get into this, we're going to have that for you, too, coming up later on in the show. So great stuff lined up. But right now it is my, I wouldn't say you're my cabin mate for the coming cruise in September from Boston to Nova Scotia, but you're, you're going to be pretty close, I'm thinking, David. David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. Hi, David. Hey, greetings from Beantown, and we're very excited because St. Patty's Day is around the corner, but it means something more to us here in Revolutionary War terms. Do you know why? Because what? We kicked the British out of Boston. Yes, you did. Thank- a nice little Virginian named George Washington decided to stop by, and uh, evacuation day is why we have closed schools in Boston, not for St. Patrick's Day, as many people think. <laughs> Interesting. Nice, nice to hear from you, as always. You know, I'll tell you, we were talking about leap year last week, and I just want to say that the odds of this family in Bismarck, North Dakota, probably have the bookies scrambling for the next four years. Did you hear about the Ellison family? And yes. New baby? It's insane. A new baby on February 29th. Congratulations. Pretty rare, but... The strange thing is that it happened four years before, and both daughters. <laughs> you know, it's a 50-50 chance for a boy or a girl, but the idea that to be born on a leap year, uh, that's some pretty good timing. I know. It's four years apart, so I, I guess they only get a birthday every four years. When they're 16, they, they celebrate their fourth, and the other one would celebrate the third. What a happy first birthday yes. for the sister of uh, right. <laughs> little Abigail. Um, my goodness. I mean, so Brandy and Abigail, happy birthday birthday and happy birthday. (laughs) Well, you know, speaking of birthdays, going across the other side of the world, the archaeological and anthropological work being done with DNA studies is just mind-boggling. And in recent years, they've always thought that Southeast Asians, about 4,000 years ago, 
intermarried with the Aboriginal families in Australia. Well, that's not the case. New DNA evidence shows that they have had no contact for 50,000 years. The Aboriginals? The Aboriginals are isolated genetically going back 50,000 years. So if we think about our ancestors coming up and going into Europe, we weren't even into Europe yet. No. <laughs> so Wow. That's amazing. So it's always exciting to hear this news. So a new aspect of genealogical DNA is unfolding. Digging a little closer to home, we talked about that mess kit. Well, I'm going to go... Right, that was a World War II story last week, right? Exactly. And, well, I'm going to go a war before. A gentleman named Michael Babin, who lives in France, is a retired banker and a collector of World War I ephemera. At a flea market recently, he bought a aluminum dog tag belonging to Frank L. Smith of the U.S. Army. And the thing about that is he's tracked down through gravestone records and talked to this man's 73-year-old daughter. And this gal lost her dad when she was 12. So Dottie Wright has been reacquainted with an artifact associated with her father nearly a century ago. Incredible. What a great story. I love what metal detectors find. Yes. I'm a metal detectorist myself. Really? Oh, yeah. It's lots of fun digging in the ground and finding what other people lost. I haven't found any Anglo-Saxon gold hoarded coins yet, but I'm still looking. That being said, if you were off the coast of North Carolina in 18 feet of water, they have found the wreck of what they believe is one of three blockade runners. So this vessel was set up during the Civil War to stop the running of the ironclads and to block the coast, uh, the Union Army's blockade, if you will. And this is is fabulous. This is perhaps one of the three boats, the Agnes Fry, the Georgiana Macaw, and I'm really hoping it's the third one, the Spunky. The Spunky. I hope it's the Spunky. Yes. I hope it's a Spunky, too. <laughs> well, wait, wait, if it was Spunky, too, then that would be the one name for the Spunky. Right, well, right. In, in any event, so that's some really exciting news. My tech tip for the week, I talked about it last week that I was going to give a test drive to Research Ties, which is researchties.com. And this is a company out of Provo, Utah. And we all have our research logs. You, know, you may print one off and write it down, or you might use a notebook. This is a professional program, which you can even beta test for free. A subscription annually is for $30 and gives you three logins and 10 gigabytes of space. I can put in the repositories I want to visit. I can put the film numbers. I can create all of the shopping lists. So when I go to the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, the National Archives in Washington, D.C., or my local public library, I can access it online by logging in. I don't have to, oh, I forgot my notebook, or why am I here? I think (laughs) this is a great program online to try out. It's a cheap service, but very efficient. What's the website again? The website is www.researchties.com. All right. And speaking of databases, AmericanAncestors.org, every week we give a free database to our guest users. And this week we have the Chatham, Massachusetts and Harwich, Massachusetts Vital Records to 1850. Help you with your pilgrim ancestors. You probably have some Cape Cod family if you have ancestors in the Northeast, and hopefully this will help you find it. Well, that's all I have from Boston. Until next time, Fish. All right. Thanks, David. Talk to you next week. And coming up for you next in three minutes, we're going to talk to Dan Debenham, the host, producer, creator of Relative Race, an incredible new genealogy reality show on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com. 
Well, Janie's my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night, has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. World, and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. So excited to tell you about our very first Extreme Genes Family History Cruise, September 13th through 18th, 2016. We'll be leaving out of Boston on Royal Caribbean with stops in Bar Harbor, Maine, St. John, New Brunswick, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. On days we're at sea, join me and David Allen Lambert, Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org for lectures and roundtables on several genealogical topics. See where your patriot ancestors fought in the revolution or where your loyalist ancestors claimed their new homes for pricing go to our extreme genes facebook page or visit extremegenes.com now is the time to make your reservations because when the cabins are gone they're gone call robin at columbus travel at 1-800-373-3328 extension 1010 and be sure to ask her about our special pre-cruise excursion in boston david and i look forward to seeing you Welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And I will tell you, at Roots Tech, we were exposed to all kinds of new products and ideas and services. But I don't think there's anything that got a bigger reaction, a bigger positive reaction, than the debut of a television show that they provided there called Relative Race. And the producer and host of that show, Dan Debenham, is with me right now. Hi, Dan. Welcome. It's good to see you, Scott. Good to see you again. Actually, I know it. I haven't seen you in a long, long time, but 15 years, I think something like that. Yeah. But this show, uh, where did you get the idea for it? How did this thing get started? And look at where you're going with it. Great questions. BYU TV, who has a mantra of seeing the good in the world, they approached us about a year ago and they said, we have a general concept and a need that we'd like to see created for our programming. And they talked to us about this idea, and I mean really from the 50,000-foot level, right? just generically speaking about this idea of a show that would kind of hunt down relatives. And gee, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> now, when we heard about this project, we got pretty stoked. And we came up with this concept where we would cast four couples, we flew them to San Francisco, and then every day we provided them with clues to run across the country and discover relatives that they never knew they had and had never met before. And they were racing from San Francisco to New York City. And along the way, each day, the last one to find their relatives receives a strike. Three strikes and you're off the show. Uh -oh. If you make it all the way to New York, you pick up $25,000. And then even that came with a twist. And the twist was, now that you have really earned this money, congratulations, because believe me, this trek across the country, this race is full of ups and downs and highs and lows and happy and sad and everything in between. But we then said, you can keep the money or you can give a portion or all of it back to the relatives you've met along the way. Oh, how cool and, is that? Uh, yeah. And so, uh, in fact, just this well, past... That's easy. I'd keep it all. You know? <laughs> well, no, I don't, believe me, it was know. very interesting to see what these couples and those that made it to New York and ultimately the couple that won first place, what they were going to do with that money. 
Well, and you know, people who are in the family history are very giving people. And they not only share of themselves, but they share information. They find photographs, that type of thing. I'm not surprised that that carries over into the financial side. Well, we didn't know quite what to expect as we researched these couples. And they submitted DNA to Ancestry DNA. And Ancestry DNA's pool at the time was less than a million. Right. And so we had to find a route that went from San Francisco to New York City that was... was, (laughs) Uh, we provided them with rental cars. We took away their cell phones, all GPS so, so devices. So let me get this idea here. You, you took the DNA from them, and then you had to literally track down descendants that fit the route so that they were all going to the same places? Now, that was the, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what we wanted to do at first, yeah. was to go to the same towns. That's crazy. It, that was, that we wound up was impossible. impossible. Right. That was yeah. impossible. Okay. So they were going to different towns, and what made the race fair is that every day they were given an allotted time, an allotted time to get to the different towns because they were sure, all racing have to, to different adjust towns. It. Yeah. Okay. And so it was the couple that came closest to their allotted time that won, right. and the couple that came furthest from their allotted time that received a strike, three strikes, and you're off the race. You guys must have been up till two, three, four o'clock in the morning every day trying it, to work these little problems it, it, out. It was it was wild. <laughs> it was a wild ride. And the show is you mentioned that it debuted episode one, debuted at Roots Deck, and we received a standing ovation. Oh, it was nuts. People were Did you see it? Was it? Did you see it? It yeah. was great. That it's people really good. were really enthusiastic about it. And this is the thing about family history is that if it's entertaining to people who aren't into family history, you know you've got something great. And that's that's what it looks like to me. So tell us now, you're, you, I was looking at this debut. Now, BYU TV, by the way, is a cable station that's available correct. in a lot of markets. 56 but, million homes in America. And, and there are plenty of places that they do not get into. So I would assume you, you could watch online. online. Absolutely. Binge watch the first two episodes right, right, right. now. <laughs> because uh, coming up, we, we just uh, saw episode two this past Sunday. And every original episode is every Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then you can back it up from there. 7 sure. p.m. Central. Uh, 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. You can watch it online at BYUtv.org. So anytime, right. catch up episodes one and two. And then you can watch it on either BYUtv.org or you can stream it at relativerace.com. But again, we, we hope as you get caught up that you'll join every original episode airing every Sunday night. Sure. It's really it's really fun. Well, it's well, wild. It's just a good thing to set your recorder on no matter what exactly. it is and, and catch That's what the I show. Do. <laughs> I was just thinking, I'm looking at this going, well, you're bad luck. The first night you're on against the Oscars. That's your, true. Your debut night. <laughs> That's the, true. The next week you're on against the closing, the last episode of Downton Abbey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, and, which, and the presidential debate uh, there's, as well. Well, that we can all skip to watch <laughs> so, this. I, I, but still, I mean, that's yeah. your first two shows. Shows your first two weeks. That's a tough lineup to yeah. be up against. And you know what? We just filmed this past weekend, episode eleven, which we flew all the couples back and shot this episode eleven, which is called "After the Race," where sure. the four couples come back and then talk about their experiences more. And we tossed them different vignettes, different parts of the episodes, and we have them comment on them more. And there were representatives there from BYU TV, and I actually asked them about that. I said, "What can you <laughs> can you explain to me what the thinking was here?" And and, and they said, "You know." It was a little bit of a, an error on our part when we <laughs> when we put this in place like eight months ago. And yeah. they said, but you know what? They said, we're, we're finding that uh, social media and the streaming is really peaking upwards sure. uh, already. So people are saying, yeah, I, I wasn't able to watch it Sunday night against the Oscars, but I am streaming it and watching it online. So when you pick these couples, were these people who actually applied to be on yes. the show? Yes. Yeah. So we put out a casting call through a number of different mediums, including a lot uh, via social media. And we created a website called TRR Casting, which stood for The Relative Race, trrcasting.com. Over a thousand people uh, went to the site and we asked them to submit a video, one to two minutes that explained who they are and why they should be on the show. And we gave a little bit of a premise of the show. They didn't know the details. In fact, episode one, which again, we really hope you watch episode one. <laughs> That's kind uh, of important to watch uh, the first one. one. Well, it gives the backstories yes. of all the couples and, and you find out in episode one when they arrive in San Francisco, one of the very first things that is asked of the host, uh, at the, at me. So I'm standing there and I, we're at pier 39 overlooking the ocean. And I said, welcome to relative race. I said, you've come from all over the country and you have 4,500 miles in front of you. And the first thing I want to know is how many of you like your phones and have brought them here? They all raise their hand, of course. And I said, how many of you think you could do without them? And their jaws start dropping. And oh, boy. so we took away all of their cell phones. We took away every GPS device. I then said, well, welcome to your new GPS navigational device. 
and I raised it up and I said, this is what we call a map, a paper map. Oh boy. And so the age group is all over the map of our couples. We actually thought the youngest couple who were in their twenties would just implode. (laughs) And they actually fared, they did pretty well. Um, There's much more than a dynamic here of, of discovering new family relatives though. The interesting dynamic is that they have up to eight hours together in a rental car every right. day. And yeah. they're trying to figure out how with, to get to With a film different... crew. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. With six people around them, multiple cameras, uh, GoPros inside their car, everything is recorded. And it is fascinating to see how they get through this journey. So do you have each team basically has their own editing crew that puts together their their package and then, then somebody else assembles the whole thing? Yeah, there after, is a media oh manager goodness. on site and then all that media comes back to us in our studios. And we've been spending about five months editing everything and we're very close to editing the entire series. So again, now is the time to catch up and get hooked because it is... We, we've done a number of uh, original television shows throughout the years, and we feel uh, you know fortunate to be able to do that. This is, I can honestly say, the best show we have ever created. It, it is really good. Well, that's what I keep hearing from everybody, and I wouldn't say it if that wasn't the case. So give us one little hint of one story from this entire season yeah. that hits you most right here. Well, you know what? It's actually the next episode. It's episode three okay. happens to be my favorite episode, and okay. you, I've got chills right now saying it. In this episode, one of the couples, and it's the husband, because you never know when you show up, well, who am I related to? Is it the wife or the husband? Right. And the couple discovers a cousin, and it's the the husband that finds a first cousin that he never knew that he had. Really? Never knew that. Oh, there's nieces that have been met that never. No, these aren't like six cousins. Some of these people are first cousins. (laughs) One's an uncle that they never knew they had. One is a niece. In this case, it's a first cousin. And for me, it was so poignant. It was so strong to see two strong, big American men hugging each other. And the moment they grabbed each other, they just broke into tears. They're just sobbing as they say. And the statement is made by the couple that's racing. They say, if we hadn't have done this, we would never know about our family. And he said, and here's my cousin. And the moment I looked at him, I went, you're my mother. He said everything about you, his demeanor, the way he acted was his mother who he lost 15 years ago. Wow. And he just looked at this man and they both just started sobbing. And they said the same blood is running through our veins. And it's it's a poignant moment. And these moments, the series is just riddled with them. But there's also, look, there's plenty of drama. There's there's some compelling. <laughs> it's not all these incredibly emotional moments. There's there's some times where they met relatives where they were kind of like, nice to meet you. And uh, can we get on our race? Right. Again? <laughs> like all relatives. Good to like, see like all relatives. You're not getting any exactly. of the 25 grand. Yeah. Okay. Don't like them. It, okay. It, it's it's a good show. Wow. Well, that, you know, that's what family stuff is all exactly. about. There's politics even with this. Exactly. So who, who knew? Well, it's Relative Race. It's the name of the show. It's on BYU TV, which is on many cable networks throughout the United States. Otherwise, you get it where? Dish and Direct TV both have it nationwide. Everyone who has right. Dish or Direct. Or you can go online at BYUTV.org and stream it or its own website at RelativeRace.com. Dan Debenham, the host and producer. Thanks for coming on. Scott, it's a pleasure. Great to see you again. All right. Good to see you. Coming up next, it's a twofer. We'll talk to an Ireland senator who visited Roots Tech, talk about what's happening with Irish research, very important with St. Patty's Day coming up, and another woman who's offering a family grant to your student for genealogy in three minutes on Extreme Genes. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. 
Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. You have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your congenial host. And are you surprised at how much we continue to pull out of the Roots Tech Family History Conference that was held in Salt Lake City, Utah last month? I'm not only because I was there and I can tell you we continue to have things that came out of it that we have to pass along in the course of the brief time we have each week. And since a lot of places are celebrating St. Patrick's Day this weekend, it felt like a good time to share with you a visit I had with a woman who came all the way from Ireland for Roots Tech. And she wasn't just an Irish genie, she's also an Ireland senator with a strange name. So I'm talking to Ireland Senator Gillian Van Turnett. I got to understand, Senator, how it is that an Irish senator has the name Van Turnout. It's not a very Irish name. In fact, you'll only find two of them there, my husband and myself. He, he's <laughs> Dutch, and apparently Napoleon gave them all names, uh, surnames, when he was doing the census. Right, which happened in much of Europe at that time. So you're here at Roots Tech. I'm just amazed to have you here and pleased and honored to have the little time to talk to you. Tell us about what's going on with family history in Ireland, because we have so many Irish Americans who have had such a hard time over there over the years. Well, I, the records are really opening up and becoming online. Our National Library and Archive are coming on board with some of the subscription websites and some of the free websites. We do have the 1901 census and 1911 census are free online. You can see the images. They weren't burned. <laughs> they, they weren't burned. You can see the images. You can see where your ancestors led. And because we've had so many records that were burnt we've had to be inventive but the Irish we are inventive and we found a lot of workarounds like I have been able to trace my family to the late 1700s uh, and, and very substantive and they were farm labourers they weren't anybody of any means or anything of such sort that you'd say they'd have land records so you can do it it takes a little bit of digging a little bit of work but it is a great achievement we're also seeing more records now coming online in Ireland we're celebrating a commemoration this year of the 1916 Rising. So a lot of public are digging out records out of their attics, coming forward with information and resources. And our government are seeing the value that that's encouraging more people in. So yeah, I Travel. Uh -huh. Travel. And I'd be saying, my point is, people don't travel to Ireland to find out if they have Irish ancestors. You come to Ireland to walk where they walked, to stand on the land, to see where they were buried, to see where they were born, uh, see why did they leave that area. And the government government are waking up to that fact and the state is beginning to put more and more records online. We see uh, the, fam the parish records are now online on our National Library of Ireland and I believe shortly to be announced uh, two major companies are going to have an index of those records. So that would be great because that's all the parishes around Ireland. You'll really be able to see the births and marriages of your ancestors. Well and I'm noticing also that uh, there's a lot of talk about hotels now bringing in genealogical consultants to help people find their people while they travel to Ireland. Yes, uh, many of the top hotels uh, are, are having consultants online and many freelance people, genealogists in Ireland, if you go to the Association of Genealogists, uh, they're there uh, to help you. We want you to come to Ireland, but we want your experience to be rich and rewarding and that you really can. I say this as somebody who 
travelled to Wisconsin to see three generations of women in my family from a small who went to a small town in Watertown, Wisconsin. And I went because I was able to access the records at home. I was able to go out, meet the historical society, find out even more rich information. Um, and I feel I have a special link because this town were very welcoming, and I hope in Ireland we'll return that type of welcome. Oh, I have no doubt that that will be the case. Thank you so much, Senator, for coming on. And it's exciting to see what's happening in Ireland now. It's, it's been a long time in coming, but new days are ahead for genealogists with Irish ancestry. It's the time to start looking when you suspect it. If you have a name that has a slight Irish twinge to it, or you always heard stories in your families, I'd say to start searching, you will have Irish roots. Awesome stuff. Thanks for coming to Roots Tech. Thank you very much for having me on. How cool is that, that Senator Van Turnout would travel however many time zones that is to attend Roots Tech? Unbelievable. You know, people are passionate about family history, enough so to actually start a family grant to encourage high school and college students to pursue genealogy. Denise May Levernick is behind this thing, and she's on the line with me right now from Pasadena, California. How are you, Denise? I'm great. I'm great. Enjoying some wonderful weather here in California. Oh, well, I, I'm so excited for what you've got going on. Uh, back in 2010, you lost your mom, who was a fabulous genie, even researching her cousins right down to the end. And you've set up a scholarship in her name for student genealogists. You want to tell us about this? Oh, I'd love to. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, mom was, uh, she called herself a genie, and she was very excited about discovering where she came from. And when she retired, she, she lived here in Southern California, grew up here in Orange County. When she retired, she moved to Arizona and became very active there with the uh, genealogy groups. But every June, she came out to California and we would go together to the Southern California Genealogical Society Conference, the Jamboree. Right. And mom just loved it. Um, it's a it's a great conference, three days, and uh, well over a thousand people attend. So when she passed away, and uh, we were looking for some way to to honor her memory, it just seemed like a great fit. She always worked in volunteerism. She worked with students and young people. It just seemed like such a good fit to set up a student genealogy grant and tie it in with the jamboree because I'm to be honest, I'm a little bit selfish. I get to meet the winner each year. Oh, how fun. Yeah, it is fun. And we set it up in 2010, and we've had five young people receive the award. And each one of them has continued in their family history work and research. It's just been so exciting to see them kind of grow in this field. Now, this is a $500 cash award. Yes. And it's going to be awarded at the uh, Jamboree, which, by the way, is going on June 3rd through 5th of this year. So it's coming right up. Right. And they have to be between the ages of 18 and 23. Right. That's it. And That's it? And a student. That's okay, it. so they got to be going to school. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they have to also come to the Jamboree to receive the check. Okay. And because part of it is the whole conference will give them a free registration, so they get to attend at no cost. And we take them around, introduce them to people, and, you know, they get to meet the genealogy guys and, the, you know, David Lambert, if he's there from New England. It's just a wonderful opportunity for them to kind of meet a bigger community of genealogists. Absolutely. Well, Lambert, see, you probably shouldn't have mentioned that. I don't want to discourage anybody, you know, <laughs> showing up there. But, hey, this sounds like a lot of fun. How do people uh, get involved in this? How do they submit their application to possibly score this $500 cash award? Well, send any students you know to the grant page, which is at my website, www.thefamilycurator.com slash SWF dash grant. SWF Suzanne Windsor Freeman, it's my mom's name. And the whole packet is available there. We're taking applications through March 20th, so there's still time. I know students love to put their things off till the last minute, so right. we're looking forward to that. 
<laughs> yeah, this kind of says right now, do it now or forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So the familycurator.com, actually, you can find the links right there. We'll link it on our page at extremegenes.com as well. So Great. Thank you so much. Great stuff, Denise. Thanks for coming on. And uh, we look forward to hearing who the winner is this year. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Hope you can meet him. And coming up next, Tom Perry from tmcplace.com, the Preservation Authority, returns to talk about the cloud seems there are some folks that have some concerns about preserving their digital family photos and audio and video there. Are they justified? Tom will set the record straight next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. Settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. And welcome to Cloud Talk on Extreme Genes, America's family history show at ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, the radio root sleuth with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He is our preservation authority we have on every week. And Tom, we're just talking about this off air. It is just amazing how quickly things are changing with the cloud and how that is kind of confusing. You know what it really reminds me of going way back when fax machines first came out? Yep. Remember this? Yep, fax, absolutely. Fax machines came out and businesses immediately 
went to these things because it was a huge boon in communication. And yet there were so many people who hadn't even heard of them yet, and they were already in all the, the businesses around the country. And wait, wait a minute, what does the fax machine do? How do We could have this at home, remember? Oh, yeah, exactly. Any place you had a phone plugged, you could have a fax machine. Right, and so everything has changed. Now the cloud has kind of become, I think in some ways, very much the same thing as a 21st century version of the fax machine, where it's out there, everybody's using it, but there's still a huge number of people kind of left scratching their head going, well, wait a minute, what do I count on? How do I use it? What should it cost me? Why should I use it? And what, oh, exactly. All these things. Oh, you know, that is absolutely the best comparison I've ever heard of what the cloud is. Even before this, when there were copy machines, which actually turned into fax machines, you'd go into the precursors to Kinko's and they didn't let you touch the machines. You right. would <laughs> hand them your stuff, they would run it. And then they started letting you start doing it. If you can power on your computer, you can store stuff in the cloud. It's really that easy. It's not as hard as people think it is. Right. And, and we're addressing folks who are just getting started in this and, and in storage and in preservation of their digital material, uh, scanning photographs, photoshopping them and making sure they're not going anywhere. Exactly. And some people are intimidated. They think, oh, I don't want to learn this new software. I don't want to learn how to fix my pictures. Storing stuff on the cloud isn't like that. It's not something new you need to really learn. Anybody that's even a virgin at computers can figure out how to do this. You have an icon on your desktop, but you tell it that's where you want to store everything is on Lightjar or iCloud or their Google Drive or Dropbox. And once it's set up, it does it for you in the background. You just keep dropping it, dropping it, and dropping it. And one of the neatest things about the cloud that I love is whether I'm on the road, if I'm home, if I'm at work, I can access any of my stuff. I don't have to, oh, make a backup of this drive, keep it on this thumb drive, haul it with me. I can go any place. There's an internet connection, even on an airplane, and I can go to Dropbox and work on a Photoshop document or work on my genealogy or anything I want to. And the neat thing about it is, oh, hey, my sister Diane might be interested in these photos that I just found. So I send her an invite. She gets an email. She has access to just that folder that I gave her permission to. It's almost like one of those too-good-to-be-true things. It is absolutely incredible. And everybody needs to get some kind of cloud storage. We had a friend that just lost her house just the other day that burnt to the ground. And all her stuff was in it. They had nothing on the cloud. So basically... If their brothers or sisters or other relatives didn't have any copies of what they had just had in their house, they've lost everything. Yes, that's right. And we we just had a disaster at our home radio station of past storage. Now, fortunately, of course, everything for Extreme Genes is stored on a cloud. So while it took some time to restore everything that had been lost locally, it was there. And exactly. you know, we're able to get back in, in business pretty darn fast. But this is such an important thing to understand if you're just getting started in family history that you know the cloud is a simple thing that takes care of itself. In fact, I've got one that every 15 minutes it goes through and looks for any changes I've made in my computer at all and makes those changes and duplicates them in this cloud storage area. And so if I lose my computer, it goes down or somebody stole it, heaven forbid. This is all available to me instantly to restore. And like you say, instant is what's so important. In fact, right after the break, let's talk a little bit about how instant this thing can be, but you don't have to keep everything on every single computer. You can give certain parameters of what you want to keep on each individual computer. All right. Great advice. We'll get into it more coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmasters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. 
When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. We are back. Final segment of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show on ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the radio root sleuth. Tom Perry's in the house from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. And we've been talking about, I guess you'd call this Clouds 101. Exactly. Because there's, like we talked about earlier, it's a little bit like it was with fax machines. They came along very quickly, and a lot of people are left scratching their heads going, wait, do I have to have this? Does it have to cost? Is it hard to use? What do I do with it? And, and this is a lot of folks who are just now perhaps getting into family history preservation. Oh, absolutely. Like we've done film transfers for people that we say, hey, do you want us to put it on the cloud? Then you have it instantly. You don't even have to come back in the store. We don't have to ship it to you. It's like, oh, like it's this big haunting <laughs> thing. Oh, no, I can't do the cloud. I don't know a computer very well. I can spend 10 minutes with somebody and show them how to use the cloud. Because like I say in the earlier segment, once it's set up, it rocks and rolls. And the neat thing about having all your stuff in the cloud if you're at home and you're working on something, oh, you know what? I was going to finish this thing for this report for the meeting in the morning. I'm going to work on that now instead of going in early. You go into the cloud, you pull it down, and there it is. Like I just bought one of those new mini iPads I use as a GPS in my Suburban because it doesn't have a GPS and it's cheaper to do that. As soon as I bought it, I plugged it in, typed in my thing, boom. All my photos, all my apps, everything are right there. I don't have to re-download them. I don't have to go search for them. I don't even have to pay for them again because the way they're set up. So this iPad I sent up last night already has everything on it that I need. And that's the way it is with the cloud. Like sometimes I get the warning on my computer says, oh, you're running out of memory. So I go to my Dropbox and I say, okay, well, you know, I don't really need these things on this computer because I don't access them very right. well. So I go in and say, hey, don't need it on this computer anymore. So it erases them from the computer. They're still in the cloud. So now I have all this memory. But yet if one day I go, oh, you know what? I really do need that. Go back in, click on it. And five, 10 minutes, it's all back there again. Right. Download it again. And, and the question also always comes up about security with oh, the yeah. cloud. Everybody kind of concerned about that. And certainly there's risk of security with anything you do. I would suggest that there's the possibility that security on your home computer is probably riskier than security on a cloud like Google Drive or Dropbox. Oh, absolutely. Somebody could break into your home and steal your computer. They've got everything that's on your computer. And even if you have it encrypted with passwords, most people, unfortunately, don't change their password very often, or they have something really easy like their birth date or the name of their dog or their firstborn kid. Or one, two, three, four. Oh, I have actually had customers. <laughs> Customers call and say, hey, I need you to download this stuff off my phone. I want it on a video DVD. In fact, we tell them, change your password, send that to us, and then change it back so we don't have They go, oh, no, it's easy. It's just one, two, three, four. (laughs) And I'm going, okay, you just gave me your password. What other devices do you have that have the same password? (laughs) So security is important. I have never heard of a breach on the cloud. I'm sure someday it will happen. But these guys, they've learned from all the mistakes with Target and Home Depot that their stuff is so redundant now. Nothing's perfect, but, I mean, it's getting close to being there. But it's just so nice that any time you need anything, it's right there on Dropbox. And like I mentioned in the first segment, if you have relatives that you're working on things with that you want to collaborate, 
you open up a Dropbox folder that everybody has access to. So they can drop photos in, you can drop photos in, they can look at it instantly. They're not sending things, they're not getting disks and mailing them. It saves you so much time, it's just absolutely a must-have. Everybody needs to have a cloud. And as you mentioned, it's not expensive. A no. lot of clouds are even free if you keep your memory under so much. We have tons because we do lots of video for people, but yet we spend less than $100 a year. That's less than $10 a month for a terabyte's worth of storage. So it's awesome. If you can get two clouds, make sure the clouds aren't related. Whether you want Google Drive, iCloud, Dropbox, Lightjar, iCloud, get them. All right. Good stuff, Tom. Thanks for coming on. Glad to be here. We have covered a lot of ground this week. Thanks once again to Ireland Senator Gillian Van Turnout for talking to us about what's happening in Ireland with Irish research as we get ready for St. Patty's Day. Also to Denise May Levernick, who's offering a family grant to students who are into genealogy. And to Dan Dan Debenham, host and producer of The Relative Race, a great new reality show everybody's raving about. Talk to you next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.